الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First and foremost I just want to take a moment out to thank our brother Sheikh Abdul Karim who really put in a lot of effort in organizing this program and likewise the administration of the masjid. Brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, in today's lecture, I want to cover some of the hadith, some of the narrations that have that which I fear the most for you. Some of the narrations that have the wording that which I fear the most for you. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wouldn't say this Abath and Wuli. He's speaking to his companions and he's saying to them, that which I fear the most for you. That's not a light matter. He's speaking to the likes of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali. And he's saying to them, that which I fear the most for you. Is it only specific and limited to them? al jawabu la. If this is what he fears for the most greatest of those to walk on the face of this earth, then where do me and you stand? Where do me and you, who are living in such a sexualized society, where do me and you stand, brothers and sisters? And what we need to realize, my brothers and my sisters, that which is going to save every single one of us, from the trials and the tribulations, the challenges ahead is none other than ilm. I just gave a lecture now, I think it's New Park, right? Newbury Park. We were speaking about the effects of sins. Many people think the sins that one commits in today's day and age, he will only have to answer to Allah Azza wa Jalla al Qiyamah. And that there are no other consequences of his sins while he is living on the face of this earth. There are some serious consequences, brothers and sisters, that one will have to deal with. And that which is going to help us maneuver and navigate around the sexual temptations that many of us here are maybe finding a challenge with is al-ilm al-nafi' to seek knowledge. Many people think, I only have to learn if I want to become a sheikh. If I want to become a serious student of knowledge or a scholar, only then I study. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Hmm? Like I said, there are two types of fitan that we are all dealing with. Number one, Fitna to shubuhat wa fitna to shahwat. What is fitna to shubuhat? Who can tell me? Huh? Cameraman. Fitna to shubuhat are the doubts, brothers and sisters, that at times are beautified. We take our kids to these schools. And we go to these universities. What do you find in these universities? People are ready to guide you to Islam and to that which is the truth. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah Azza wa Jal that He gave me the opportunity to go to a university. Have you guys heard of Loughborough University? Loughborough University. Where at the time I was studying civil engineering. And then I had to make a decision. Either Loughborough University or Al-Medina. Which is a very hard decision. As you have peer pressure, family pressure. After spending some time there, I ended up leaving. Al-Shahid min al-Kalam. The point that I want to make my brothers and my sisters. I witnessed with my own eyes. Non-Muslims. Who learn my religion and your religion. 
for the betterment of our deen? Because they want to give aid and assistance to the deen of Islam? La. Simply because they want to target individuals like us who might be vulnerable and distant from their religion, shaky in their faith. They will target one by one. He looks like a good victim. Let's go and target him. Or they will flock around him, throwing their doubts, looking to shake his faith even more. Students like me and you, brothers and sisters, who go to university, they are there spending hours in the library learning about our religion. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? And then we are in some ghafla, some heedlessness, where we are what? Just chasing secular studies. Not that I'm saying that you shouldn't study engineering or mathematics or anything along the lines of that. I'm not saying that at all. However, that which I'm saying, my brothers and my sisters, what benefit will my secular degree have for me if I die tomorrow and I was shaking my religion? Like I said to you guys, I went to university and I was doing civil engineering. And even now, I was going to enroll in a course to do my master's. I think it's important to learn through these secular universities. However, there is a lot of caution that needs to be taken. Brothers and sisters, they are learning our religion just so they could use it against every single one of us. Targeting every single one of us just so we could what? Shake in our faith and they can add another number of those who apostated and left the fold of Islam. Let me ask you guys a question. If we as a society are heedless and are lacking basic essentials, what do you think the state of the next generation will be? What do you think? You think they'll be clinging on to their religion? They will be mindful? Do you think they will be educated? Do you think they will have insight? Put your hand up if you want to get married. And some of you guys are scared to put your hands up because you're already married. Don't worry, they're not watching. Huh? Honestly, brothers, I'm asking you guys, put your hand up if you want to get married. That's everybody here. Some are putting their hands up for the second wife, no problem. Huh? After you get married, brothers and sisters, it gets boring after a while. You want to progress in life. And what is considered progression? I want to have kids. You may think to yourself now, kids, will lie, it's not something that I'm interested in, it's not something that I'm thinking about. In the Arabic language, the human being, brothers and sisters, how do you say human being in the Arabic language? Does anybody know? Al Insan. Why do you think he's called Insan? Taib, that's one thing. Hayya. Any other meaning as to why insan is called insan? The human being is called insan? Our brother here, he mentioned because they love company. Good. Yuhib al uns. Which means, in other words, to seek pleasure in others. When you're by yourself, you need Princess Charming in your life. You're working towards it. Just so you can have this woman who will what? Grant you that company that you're looking so much for. Tayyib, after you marry her, is that it? La. You get bored, brothers, sisters. Honestly. You want the next thing, which is? Huh? What is it? You want children. Do you think it stops there? After having children. Even the mother, no, no, I didn't say second wife sisters, huh? There's some brothers who shouted that out. No, I didn't say that. You will have one child, another child, 
even these feminists, they say, we're not breeding machines of children. Anyway, that's a whole different discussion. I'll be speaking about the feminists on Monday in Manchester. You have one child, second child, third child. It gets a little bit boring after some time. They want the next thing. You know what the next thing is? Uh, grandchildren. They love the uns, which is to seek pleasure in something. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Put your hand up if you have a child, you have a son or a daughter. Hmm. It's quite a few of you. How do you feel when you see them growing up in this kind of environment? We take them to these schools that are breeding grounds for kufr, shirk, and a lot of colorful things. It's a breathing ground, brothers and sisters, for a lot of colorful things. It is being what? Rubbed on our faces. Even today when you want to cross the road, normally the zebra crossing is black and white. All of a sudden now it's colorful, fancy colors. Our children, who we take to these schools, that are breeding grounds for kufr, shirk, and now all sorts of other filth and evil. This is the kind of environment that they are growing up in. They come home and they begin to ask questions. And you, Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Abdullah, when asked these questions by your six-year-old or your seven-year-old, you have no answer for it. What is your reaction going to be? What is your reaction going to be, my brothers and my sisters? You're going to get angry? Kick the child out of the house, seven-year-old? Or maybe what, the ten-year-old? Kick them out of the house? Or start accusing them of being possessed by a jinn? No, he's not possessed by a jinn. That's the easy way out of the situation. Jinn yu khawa. Right? The guy is possessed by a jinn. No, he's not. He just doesn't have the tools to equip himself when dealing with these doubts that are coming his way. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters. Well, Allah. Agreed. I don't think anybody will challenge what I just mentioned. Let me ask you guys another question. Why do you think this colorful team has such a strong voice on social media. Why do you think that? And by the way, let me just make something very clear. I am not here to express my own views and my opinions. I just quote. I just quote. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Why do you think they have such a loud voice? Brothers, can you guys move a little bit forward, huh? A lot of brothers. As you can see, it's pretty packed. Even though they are like a raindrop in comparison to the majority of the Muslims. They are like a raindrop. But they have such a loud voice. They are controlling the narrative. Why, brothers and sisters? Why? Why do you think that? Because every single member of this colorful team is playing a role in contributing to the narrative that is being pushed. Would you guys agree with that? That's exactly what is happening, brothers and sisters. That's exactly what is happening. And this is the first one, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in the hadith, that which I fear the most for my ummah, in the akhwa for ma akhafa alaykum, or akhafa ala ummati, amanu qawmi lut. That which I fear the most for my ummah, is the practices of, what men are doing with men. I'm just quoting. Point of the matter is, my brothers and my sisters, I've already given a lecture on this particular matter, spoken about it in so many different masajid. And may Allah reward the masajid. They didn't object or contest to anything that I said. In fact, they invited me again. 
I don't want to go into too much detail with regards to it. If you want more information, go on to my YouTube channel. But the point is, every single one of them is playing a role in controlling the narrative. They seem as if they are the majority when you go online. But they are not. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, they are using the three-step strategy. This three-step strategy. Who knows what the three-step strategy is that was introduced by two Harvard graduates in the 1980s? Does anybody know? Ayya Jama'a, you guys have to be clued on on what's happening in the world. This three-step strategy, brothers and sisters, is number one, desensitize. Number two, jam. Not when you tell your friend jam. I'm not talking about that. Using jamming tactics. Number three, convert. You know if I stand on the mimbar every single week and I propagate a particular narrative, even if you don't agree with me in the first week, by week number five, you would have indeed taken in what I mentioned, at least being accepting of it or being open-minded to it. Does that make sense? And that is because I keep going on about the same thing time and time again. The second step was using jamming tactics. Anybody who says other than what is being pushed, they cancel him. They use the jamming tactic to label him either a bigot, a homophobe, a hater, a feminist, no sorry, not a feminist, a misogynist. All of these different words and names that they have what? Created in order to portray you in a negative way. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? And then you get scared. You don't say anything. You're about to let go of your morals and your values. I can't even talk about Islam anymore. Because if I do, then I will be treated in this particular way. Fear-mongering tactics are used. To make you feel like a stranger, a foreigner in your own religion. Number three, once you reach that point, brothers and sisters, it will be so easy to convert you to whatever they are pushing. They will say things like, have you guys heard of Alexander the Great? Leonardo da Vinci? Apparently all of them, they were part of the colorful team. They will say to you things like, listen, this is perfectly normal. They were like that. Stop being harsh, stop being an extremist. Everybody is doing it. Everybody is upon that. There's no harm in you also accepting it. And you being of that kind of mindset. Can you see how they shape the way you think? This is why, brothers and sisters, every single one of us has a responsibility. Otherwise, wallahi, think about your kids. Think about your grandkids. How many Muslim-born people today that we have who have lost their identity? You, my brothers and my sisters, have to go out and study your deen. Otherwise, we can call it a day on the next generation, honestly speaking. Does that make sense? This is something that is extremely vital and crucial. These three steps that I just mentioned, we can use it to our own advantage.
Just as they are being desensitized, everybody knows what desensitized means, right? Or do I need to explain and translate into English? Give you guys an example. Put your hand up if you've been to Umrah. It's a lot of you. When you go for Umrah and you spend two weeks there, you come back, you hear music being played, how do you feel? Right? It feels out of place, ah? And that is because you're not used to that kind of environment. You're not used to hearing that. Does that make sense? Two weeks, three weeks go by, and then you don't even hear it anymore. It becomes normal. And that is because it's been hitting us from every direction. Agreed? Excellent. Our kids, or us ourselves, forget about our kids for a moment. Many of you guys don't even have kids. We keep hearing the same thing time and time again in universities, in the institutes, in the schools. We go online, we hear the exact same thing. We just keep on scrolling and scrolling, scrolling like zombies. And we're becoming desensitized to a lot of filth. Is it rocket science to really understand, brothers and sisters, as to why all of a sudden your behavior changes? And you don't hang around with the wrong crowd. The scholars of the past, they would say, don't look at somebody who's lazy. Imagine now. They would say, don't look at somebody who's lazy. Why? Why do you think that? Who can tell me? Why shouldn't you look at somebody who's lazy? The more you keep looking at something, the more it subconsciously creeps in. Does that make sense? Wallahi, they would say, don't look at those lazy people. When you look in the books of Adab and how to safeguard whatever you are pursuing, sacred knowledge, don't look at the lazy person. For a very long time, we thought that the only way that we would become corrupted is by hanging around with the wrong crowd. Agreed? Ah, Baha, your mom and dad, they would say to you, Listen, don't hang around with so-and-so. And then they'll quote you the hadith of إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ جَلِيسُ الصَّالِحُ وَجَلِيسُ السُّوْحُ You know the perfume seller and the blacksmith, how it rubs off of you? They will quote you a hadith like that. Does that make sense? Them days are long gone. Thinking that that's the only way you will get corrupted and you will become affected. Thinking that's the only way. These days are long gone. الراغب الأصفهاني رحمة الله عليه يستد ليس إعداء الجليس لجليس بمقالة أو فعالة فقط One becoming affected having his mindset shaped is not just by hanging around with the wrong people or hearing what they say لا because بل بالنظر أيضا Also that what you keep looking at has a huge effect in changing the state of an individual. So you have young kids today, very young age, they're just scrolling, 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 scrolling on Instagram, especially, and ask Allah Azza wa to send somebody to close down TikTok, right? Scrolling day and night, day and night, day and night. Young kids, a young girl who has never hanged around, hung around with, women who walk around with, Skirts, mini skirts, should I say, because skirts are different. Mini skirts, she doesn't hang around with them. All wearing revealing clothes, she doesn't hang around with them. She goes to school in a hijab, but huh, she's on her phone throughout the whole day. And then the parent is thinking, Alhamdulillah, my daughter is at home. She might be exposed to that which is far more filthier while in them four walls than when she goes outside. How many bad people can you walk into when you go outside, brothers and sisters? How many? Six, seven, eight, nine, say ten. Hey, what about online? For those who didn't know, www stands for the World Wide Web. Ma'luma jadida. New info. The world wide web, the whole world has become like a small little village. And the whole world is now what? A fingertip away. Right? 
becoming so desensitized to that which they keep on looking at. And then this young child turns around to her father and says, Dad, I want to dress like this, or I don't want to wear the hijab. And the dad's thinking, what's going on here? What's going on here? She doesn't hang around with the wrong crowd. Because of what she kept on looking at. Likewise, you see brothers today, all of a sudden behaving like rappers. With the way he walks, the way he, he cuts his hair. And, and then he says to him, he goes, what's, what's wrong with that? I mean, I'm not targeting anybody here. Huh? Just giving you guys an example. And that's because he kept on looking at something. Constantly, he gazed at it, and then it just became normalized to him. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? A lot of the filth and the evil that we keep seeing on the world wide web, it is affecting us. And it's becoming normalized and accepted morally in today's society. And I put it down to two main reasons. Number one, as the Messenger Sallallahu said, من أشراط الساعة أن يقل العلم ويظهر الجهل ويظهر الزنا. From the signs of the hour is that ignorance becomes so widespread. Ilm becomes scarce. Knowledge, you know, finding knowledge? Or becomes so scarce. Ignorance takes over. And the zina becomes so prevalent as well. So due to lack of knowledge, we are becoming what's so desensitized to filth and evil. And number two also, I put it down to, there are not being enough people who are speaking out. Would you guys agree if we played the same role as the colorful team, where every one of them keeps coming out, I'm not telling you to do it, but you click on some of these hashtags on Twitter, like you think, Akhi, these guys are like a nation. But how much is being posted? It's always trending. Always. If we, every time, propagated that which is right, that which is the truth, you think many Muslims will fall victim to this today? Or at least start sympathizing or empathizing towards this minority group? Do you think that? you think that would have happened? And I got told in America, and simply because, and I put this down to leading Islamic figures not taking the correct stance that Allah Azza wa Jalla pleased with. You ask them, do you agree with this kind of stuff? You say, I agree with it politically. This is live on Al Jazeera. Huh? But I disagree with it morally. So you got young men watching this. Allah, you know what some brother said to me? You'll walk through a, you will walk through the university campus. You will struggle to find a hijabi that doesn't have rainbow colors on a chest. You will struggle. Wallah, he said you will struggle. They've been made to feel that we need to hold hands. We need to have coalitions. And when I heard this, Wallahi, I started going to just about every masjid and making mention about this particular topic. Out of fear that this will happen to us here in the UK, and Alhamdulillah in the UK, we are a lot more conservative. There's a lot more of us. Look at how many brothers have attended. They are a lot more conservative and clinging to their religion. However, that can easily change. And that is, if everyone decides, you know what, I don't want to study what I was created for. And likewise, the second point is what? If one decides to take a decision that I'm not going to say anything. So what does it all go back to? Talib al-ilm. Seeking knowledge, my beloved brothers and sisters. Seeking knowledge. It's not just for you to become a sheikh when it comes to seeking knowledge. There's so much more to that. That will protect you from a lot of evil and a lot of filth. The next narration that I wanted to mention that has the wording, which I feared the most for you, is 
And the Prophet mm-hmm. said, Inna akhwafa ma khafu alaykum ayyuhan nasu ma sami'tu min Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul min al-shahwati al-khafiyya wa shirk That which I fear the most few is the hidden type of lust or temptation. And also shirk was mentioned. So the companion, he said, فَأَمَّا الشَّهْوَةُ الْخَفِيَّةُ فَقَدْ عَرَفْنَاهَا As for this hidden type of lust, we have come to know about it. هِيَ شَهْوَاتُ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ نِسَائِهَا They are the temptations of this dunya of the women. Right? Brothers and sisters. Thinking, shall I go into the whole feminist stuff? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what we need to understand, brothers and sisters, is as Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned, wa'alam, have knowledge and know, and asl al-ishqi itlaq al The root cause for al-ishq, which can be translated as infatuation. Do you guys know what being infatuated means? This deep type of love. And I say that he becomes afflicted with. Because love, brothers and sisters, can be what an affliction. It can be torture. That one just struggles to walk away from it. Or to rid himself from it. Is what itlaqul basar is not lowering your gaze. Every single one of us here, brothers and sisters, is going to make a promise, inshallah ta'ala, with his Lord that as soon as we walk out of this door, we are going to keep on trying to lower our gaze. Inshallah ta'ala. That which is destroying every single one of us, my brothers and my sisters. Is the blessing of the eye that we are not lowering that we keep on using for the wrong reasons and then he says what can you have min darik just as it's fate for a man you have mar'a it is also fit for a woman and then look what he says oh this part is so saddening he says دين خلق كثير من المتعبدين بإطلاق البصر. He says many people of religiosity they lost their religion. You know because of what? Because of them not lowering their gaze. See the guy walks into the masjid, mashallah, big beard, thawb, everything. He lost his faith because he did not lower his gaze. The issue of women, my brothers and my sisters, is not a light matter. Wallah, it's not. Right? Especially in the era of social media. When you have all types of filth at your disposal. There are some studies that I came across that Instagram has contributed hugely to one becoming addicted to adult content. Do you guys agree with that? That this may be a huge cause. He comes across images that he clicks on which he takes pleasure from. However, as time goes on, this is no longer enough to fulfill his desire. So he needs more. So then he turns to what? Adult content. Allah, brothers, it's so heartbreaking to continue keep receiving messages from brothers who have become addicted to this. And they're crying. Allah, you could actually imagine them crying. With how he is writing this, saying that I'm going to run myself into destruction. Please help. Crying out for help. How did it all start? Due to an innocent look. Due to an innocent look. In the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, and I said this yesterday as well in Edmonton Islamic Center. May Allah wrote that message. They were very kind to me. In the month of Ramadan, 
I had brothers and sisters messaging me saying, I committed zina. Brothers, it is a major sin for one to have sexual intercourse with his wife while fasting. It's a major sin. It's not a light matter. I'm receiving messages of brothers and sisters who committed zina in the month of Ramadan. I would also ask, did you know one another before the month of Ramadan? You know what the answer is? No, we didn't know each other. And it's only maybe five, six days into the month of Ramadan. How did we get to know one another? How do you think? Instagram, also known as Fitnagram. Well, I remember when the brothers, they gave me the Instagram account, may Allah reward them. They had something like 800 followers. And I always thought that Instagram was for little kids. This is back in 2015. I always thought that it was what? For little kids. So I said, hey, what am I going to do with this account? They were like, all the shabab are on there. But they said, we, agree, we <coughs> warn you of one very huge thing, and that is, don't click the search button. Don't click the search button. An innocent look, brothers and sisters, leads to the unexpected, which is what? A zina. They met one another on social media, and they eventually ended up falling into a zina six days or seven days into the month of Ramadan. Sometimes the shaitan whispers, right? After this girl has slipped into your DMs, I'll give her da'wah and then marry her. She ends up giving da'wah to him. Her looks end up giving da'wah to him. Wallahi, the moment you click on that profile picture, brothers and sisters, you are playing with fire. Wallahi, you're playing with fire. And you will lead yourself into destruction that you may struggle to ever get over. And then we should also be mention, make mention of is when one is alone with the opposite gender. Amara you could feel What do you guys think of that? I'm a strong man. Huh? Alpha male. Masculinity. I can handle myself. Skin. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا تَرَكْتُ فِتْنَةً أَضْنَرَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ I haven't left a fitna that is greater upon my ummah than women. Have you guys heard of Sa'id ibn Musayyib? Who is Sa'id ibn Musayyib? Thank you, Jameel. Now, it was from the greatest, not just that from the Tabi'een, from the greatest of the Tabi'een. Right, from the greatest of the Tabi'een, those who met the companions. You know what he says about himself? لَقَدْ بَلَغْتُ ثَمَانِينَ سَنَةً I have reached the age of 80. 80, others. Not 25, 26, 30, 80 years of age. Who go away? As they say in Somali. Huh? The guys become extremely old in age. And you know what he says? وَأَنَا أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيَّ النِّسَاءِ That which I fear the most for myself is none other than women. You may say, oh, he's from the ancient scholars and whatever have you. Have you guys heard of Sheikh Al-Bani, rahmatullahi alayhi? Contemporary, right? He says that which is similar. He said, I have reached the age of 74. I fear for myself the fitna of women. Then how about the shabab? Have you guys heard of Atai ibn Abi Rabah? Atai ibn Abi Rabah. He was known as the Black Mufti of Mecca. The Black Mufti of Mecca. Ibn al Mulaqi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, Kana Habashiyan Aswada. He was a black Abyssinian. A'raj, he used to live. Aftas, pug nose. 
He couldn't see properly. A shell, he was also paralyzed. لا مرأة له, he didn't have a wife. ثم عمي في آخر عمره. He became blind at the end of his life. So that which raised him, brothers and sisters, العلم والعمل به. Knowledge and also acting upon it. You'd probably think to yourself, somebody of this kind of appearance would be looked down upon in society, صح? Who would want to employ him? Who would want to even like engage with him? He had all the odds stacked up against him and still became the black mufti of Mecca. Abdullah ibn Umar the Arab, the Qurashi, the one who narrated the most hadith after Abu Huraira, would come to Mecca and people would come running, wanting to ask questions. So Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar al-Khattab, he said, you want to come to me to jama'una li al-masail? Wafi kum atay nabi rabah? You want to bring me your question? You have Atay Nabi Rabah, the Black Mufti of Mecca. Anyways, why am I mentioning Atay Nabi Rabah and his appearance? Even though he looked like that, you know what he said? لو اتمنت على بيت مال لكنت أمينا. If you were to place me in charge of the treasury, no chance that Rishi Shunak, right? So they call him Sah. Rishi Sunak. Did I say the name correct? He was the Chancellor, صح? Giving out money. Huh? In COVID. Fellow. Atai ibn Abi Rabah is saying, if I had that kind of position as a Chancellor, and you asked me to be in charge of all of this wealth, I would be trustworthy. You can trust me on that. وَلَا آمَنُ نَفْسِي عَلَىٰ أَمَةٍ شَوْهَا However, a slave girl that is ugly, I can't trust myself with that. You have his appearance. This man, brother, is paralyzed. And then you have this slave girl that is not good looking at all. He goes, I can't trust myself. Saying he would be a safe pair of hands when it comes to wealth, but when it comes to this woman, like you know, brothers and sisters, we can quote all of this, and I mentioned this earlier as well. I think only a couple of brothers came here from the masjid. Who came? Put your hand up if you attended the other. Oh wow, good few of you guys. You guys got here before me. جميل. It's a point that I wanted to make. Huh? Something I wanted to mention. سبحان الله فقط. نعم. We can quote all of these narrations. We can quote a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can quote the Quran when it comes to how you should interact with the opposite agenda, but they will look at you as someone who's backwards, out of touch with reality. Listen, bro. 2022, we have to be relaxed. Making it look like as if these texts are out of touch with reality. Agreed? Hmm. Earlier we spoke about what the importance of knowledge, صح? I gave a lecture, it's called, some of you guys may have watched it, Filthy Fathers, Cheating Husbands, and Free Mixing. Right? And I believe the reason why I picked up so much publicity is because I mentioned in this video first-hand accounts of victims Victims of what? Victims of gender mixing. Where a woman would send in her personal experience of how she fell victim and how her relationship became destroyed. Because she opened the door for other couples to come in and enjoy tea with them. In the same household, zina would take place between different spouses upstairs. 
These are real stories that were on the Islam Q&A. And one time I just decided, you know what, let me do a lecture on this and just start reading. One personal account after the next and after the next and after the next. It's a little too late now, the damage has been done. When you could have just what? Listened to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Agreed? When He told you, مَا خَلَى رَجُلْ مَا عَمْرَاتٍ لَكَانَ ثَالِثٍ مِنْ الشَّيْطَانِ Never does one seclude himself with a woman except that the third is shaitan. Wallahi brothers and sisters, I've been told a practicing brother would go for a marriage meeting. Right? It's only them two there and her mother. Her mother is meant to be sitting there, but she goes upstairs to watch a soap opera. A soap opera. It's only them two inside of the room for a marriage meeting, practicing. What did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? The third is who? Shaitan. And before you know it, they are committing all sorts of sins amongst themselves. I just read out a whole load of people's personal accounts. The feminist will say to you, stop being overprotective. Why do you feel insecure? These are the tactics that are used to rip you off your ghayra, your protective jealousy, which is a manly, you want to be a high value man? That's something that you should have. Somebody with ghayra, which is aslu deen, as Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi mentions. وَمَنْ لَا غَيْرَةُ لَأَدِينَ لَهُ This is what the foundation of your religion, uh, the, the foundation of your religion. And anyone who doesn't have that protective jealousy over his women folk, this person does have deen. You will see that his deen will become what? Very, very shallow. Out of all the characteristics that Ibn Qayyim could have spoken about, he made mention of that which relates to one's protective jealousy. And how it keeps your heart alive. You know the same effect that the warmth inside of your body has? What happens if you lose that warmth? You'll die. And he's saying if you lose your protective jealousy, you'll die as well. Your heart will die. Hmm? How long do I have? So we have seven minutes. Please brothers and sisters, especially those who come from backgrounds where free mixing is so normalized. Sometimes they say to you, Akhi, that's just your cousin. Stop being a haram police, stop being shedded. Go upstairs, watch the film together, no problem. And then we have to pick up the pieces because they message in, oh, this has happened, what should we do? Just listen to Allah Azza wa Listen to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Seek some basic knowledge. Wallahi, after reading all of the personal accounts, Something occurred to me at a time. And it's times like that, brother and sister, that we really appreciate knowledge. Honestly, that could prevent you from all of the social problems and issues that you go through. So I want to conclude this particular point with some lines of poetry by Al-Qahtani, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he said, لا تخلو بامرأة لديك بريبة ولو كنت في النساك مثل بناني Have you guys heard of an individual called Banan? Banan was the devout worshipper that the people of the past was used as an example when speaking about the righteous individual. Even if you're like him, don't ever be alone with a woman. Don't ever be alone with a woman. And look what he says. إِنَّ الرِّجَالَ النَّاظِرِينَ إِلَى النِّسَاءَ مِثْلُ الْكِلَابِ تَطُوفَ بِالْلُحْمَانِ Sisters are going to love this. Those men that are looking at women, they are no different to dogs when they see a piece of flesh. When a dog sees a piece of flesh, what does he do? He starts huffing and puffing around this piece of flesh. صح? He starts barking at it. Now let me ask you guys an honest question. Are men like that? Sisters, the brother said yes.
these feminists they have an issue with the patriarchy system. Welly, why do I need to ask my welly if I want to get married? The Sharia puts down steps to protect you. Because there are these men who are ready to take advantage. But then you have a high value man, a wali in the equation who inshallah ta'ala is going to put down that which is going to inshallah ta'ala protect you from a lot of headache. Even if you just look at the psychological way of thinking by a man, a woman who is by herself, who doesn't have a male protector, how do you think he's thinking? I could just easily chew her and then spit her out. The shara, the legislation is very wise, brothers and sisters. As opposed to when there are men around her, that are there looking out for her, protecting her. He'll think twice. Right? He'll think twice in how he deals with that woman. Then he says, إِن لَمْ تَصُنْ تِلْكَ اللُّحُومَ أُسُودُهَا أُكِلَتْ بِلَا عِوَضٍ وَلَا أَثْمَانٍ If the lions don't protect these women, you as a father, you as an older brother, right? If you don't protect, you will see that it will be taken advantage of and you will not receive anything in return. And then he advises you, O oh man, لا تقبلن من النساء مودة فقلوبهن السريعة الميلان. Don't accept affection from women. You sometimes putting on a certain face, huh? Mr. Charming smiles, looks at her a certain way. Their hearts easily sway and swerve. And before you know it, you'll find yourself in a very difficult pickle to get yourself out of. And then he says, لا تتركن أحدا بأهلك خاليا فعلى النساء تقاتل الأخوان Don't ever leave your wife with another individual. Over women, blood brothers have fought one another. Again, they will use that card of, listen, why are you being overprotective for? Why do you feel insecure? Right? And sometimes even moms will say this to their own children when they bring their wives over. Why are you scared that he's going to take your wife from you? It's not about one feeling insecure or being scared of his wife or whatever have you. هذا شرع الله and then when the damage is done, what will the response be? So many have become psychologically affected. They felt like that they lost their masculinity. Huh? They felt like my brothers and my sisters, that they l lost their confidence because of how treacherous people have been around them. It breaks you, brothers and sisters. And then it says, وَغْضُ الْجُفُونَكَ عَنْ مُلَاحَظَةِ النِّسَى وَمَحَاسِنِ الْأَحْدَاثِ وَالصِّبْيَانِ And then it says, make sure you lower your gaze. When gazing at women. And also, not just women. And this comes in extremely handy. Good-looking young men, don't be gazing at them. Ah, uh, brothers and sisters, we get messages all the time of brothers and sisters who feel attracted to the same gender. And we are very soft with them. We don't annihilate them, brothers and sisters. Some people are affected by this and they want genuine advice. How can I overcome some of these feelings that I have? One of them without a shadow of a doubt, they stop looking at him. Lower your gaze, just as we would tell 
One, to lower his gaze when he sees the opposite gender. Ah, don't, don't look. Right? Especially because of how much is being accepted in society. Right? You may let your guard down. And before you know it, it's so much more easier to embrace. Because others are doing it. How long do I have? Khalas? Someone said two minutes. Shah Abdul Karim. Khalas, the bell went off. Khalas, Shaykh? You heard one after Isha. People are locally trying for, they want to pray on time, so inshallah we'll have the Jama on time. Okay, we'll take some questions after, inshallah. Yeah, after yeah? Salah, then we can add more sir. Right, Go on for maybe another 15 minutes and then, inshallah. Ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum after that. Huh? <coughs> I just want to take a moment out to thank the administration, Zakumullah Khair, for organizing this lovely event with all these different brothers. Barakallah Fikum.